Hey, what's up guys it's still from female concept so today we are going to create a simple video slideshow in adobe photoshop and premiere pro let's get started welcome to final concept click the subscribe button and hit the bell icon so you don't miss out on any of our future videos all right so first off let's start with photoshop and let's go ahead and open it up here and i'll create a new document and you can set the weight and height to whatever you want but i want to have a 1080p form of resolution so i'll go to film and video and i'll click on 1080p or whichever you feel comfortable with i like the first one so i'll click on create now once we have that let me zoom out make sure you go to window and click on timeline it should be somewhere down here and it's going to pop up like so then you click on create video timeline now once you've done this all you have to do is import your images or video files in there if you also have audio this is the exact same place you are going to import them so let's start with a few pictures which i have on my desktop so i'll click on this um, icon we have right here and go to add media then I'll go ahead and find the media which I already have on my desktop so I'll select all of them now if you want to select these bands you can just hold um, the shift key click on the first one hold the shift key and click on the last one and going to select all of them if you want to select a few of them then hold down the control key so you can select a bunch of them without affecting the whole row or column so I'll click on open and they should open all of them up in Photoshop like so so as you can see if I go ahead and use the playhead which is this then we have here and slide them over you can see that we have one image another image and so on and so forth now as you can see the images are too huge for our um, working area so we have to reduce their sizes so what I'll do is you know we don't need the first one it was actually um, a white background so we can go ahead and delete using the last icon at the bottom here so for the first one let's go ahead and grab the move to let me zoom out a bit with the move to selected make sure that the timeline is on that first one if the timeline is on the second one you can't make adjustment to the first one because the playhead is not active there so you notice that if i am here but i still have the first image active we have no options to resize it but the moment i bring the playhead over here we have the option to do that so i just resize it to about this big make sure it fits my project like so and click on ok then i'll select the second one move the playhead also over there resize it probably put it here like so and do the exact same thing for the third one and the fourth one as well all right so basically this is what we have now if for some reason you want to put as many images as possible in there like what you have here we have a transparent background over here and over here which is uh, quite unfortunate we want to fill up the entire space so you can go ahead and duplicate this so if you have your video group selected you can use ctrl j to duplicate or just click and drag onto the second icon from here so that's going to create a duplicate for us now in the duplicate you can go ahead and move them about so i can place this somewhere here and place this somewhere here however you feel comfortable with you just do it like so move the playhead again this can come to this hand side and this can come to this hand side i believe this one is a bit smaller so i can increase the size to something like this and over here too i'll do the exact same thing so let's go ahead and increase the size first place one on the right and place one on the left and the last one also now after this what we are basically going to do is add in what we call transitions so for transitions what it actually mean is moving from one image to the other or moving from an image to a video in fact moving from one media to another that's basically what transition is so if i go ahead and if you play this you can see that it moves from one picture 
them to the other then it moves to another now there's no form of transition in between here and there so what we are going to do is if you look over here at this icon you can see we have a bunch of transitions we have the fade the cross fade fade with black fade with white fade with color now I'll just go with the simple ones which is the fade so I'll just click and drag and drop them onto the timeline like so now there's something quite interesting you notice here the area you're going to place the transition shows how fast or how the transition is going to look so if I go ahead and grab the fade transition and I place it right in between like so you notice that the square around it changes if I place it a little bit to the left hand side it's going to show more of this before it fades here so if I go ahead and play this this is what we have now let's say I move it over to the other side so more of the right image before this then this is what we have I notice this took a longer while now what I like to do is place it between the two so it has um, an equal proportion so if 50% is fading out then 50% of the next image is fading in that is what I like to do most of the time so that's what uh, I'm going to apply on all of these images now for your own project you can go ahead and try the cross fade you can go ahead and try the fade in black and so on and so forth they are basically transitions that you can always play around but I always prefer using um, the just fade or cross fade either one is going to work just fine now mind you because we have these transparent backgrounds and um, Photoshop if you try to render it Photoshop is just going to apply a white background to it it's just by default so don't worry about that now we have these nice transitions we want to add in some form of audio to make it a lot nicer so to add in an audio track you can see at the bottom here we have audio track click on the audio icon from here add audio find where the audio is in my case it's from my desktop and i click open so with the audio clip selected i'll move my playhead to the end wherever the playhead is that is where the cut is going to show so i'll just cut it over here now i don't need this part and if i go ahead and play this this is what we have Now once you're done you have to render this as a video before you can go ahead and play it without the use of photoshop so in rendering uh, it's as simple as just going to file export and click render video and once it's loaded up just select a folder you want to put it in and click render and basically that's it leave all other options as it is don't go ahead and mess around with them too much the one you can mess around with is probably the preset so you can select a high quality, a medium quality, low quality and so on and so forth. But I would recommend you leave everything the way it is and just click on render. Now you may have noticed that using Photoshop is a lot easier so let's see if we can complicate things a little bit by using the Adobe Premiere Pro. So I'll go ahead and open it up here. And I'm going to assume you already know how to create a new project. So I'm going to leave mine as a slideshow and just click on OK. Now, if your interface is not looking like mine, uh, don't worry. You just have to find the project window and import your images in there. So uh, I'll find mine on the desktop. It's not just images, any form of media should work just fine. So I'll select both the images and the audio file so i'll just click and drag and drop them in here and prima pro is just going to import all of them so once i'm done i'm just going to click and drag all the images on the timeline like so and it's just going to arrange everything in that order for me now you may have noticed that it took the dimension of the images if you want to change it for some reason you just go to sequence sequence settings then you make your adjustment over here 
which I am actually going to do. So I'll probably set mine to um, 1920. Nope, 1080 by 1920. And confirm by clicking OK. So this is what I have. Now, just like Photoshop, you can add in audio files and it is a lot easier even in Premiere Pro. You just click and drag and drop onto the audio layers, which starts from A1 up to A99, I think. The same applies for video, so V1 up to V99. So with the Premiere Pro app, instead of using the cut or the scissor icon we saw in Photoshop, we have what we call the razor tool. So it's right around here. You can use C on your keyboard, the shortcut key is C. So with that selected, move to where you want to cut it. So I have mine over here. I click cut or I click on it and it's just going to cut it for me. Now I can reselect this using the selection tool, which is the V on your keyboard and I'll delete this part because I don't need it. And basically that is it. Now the fun part about this is you can always go ahead and make adjustments to your images so you can see this image is quite huge so once you select the image go to effect controls now if you are unable to see anything i've said so far just go to your window and if you have the name in mind just make sure that it is checked so effect controls is checked so mine is also showing so if yours is not showing just go to window and make sure that it is checked so i'll just reduce the size by going to scale and as you can see, the size is reducing for me. You can also play around the position if you want it to move a lot to the right or to the top or bottom. You can basically just do all of that. Now, if I move to the next one, which is this one, I also reduce the size by a little and probably pull it to the right and the top just a little bit. Now, I wouldn't want to do this one after the other. It's a bit too uncomfortable imagine having thousands of images you can't do this for all of them so what i'll do is i'll just right click on one of the images that i have my effect i'll click on copy i'll select the rest right click on them and go to paste attributes and in the paste attributes make sure all these are checked and just click on ok and it's just going to apply the same effect for me and so if I go ahead and play this, this is what I have. Now, as you can see, we don't have any form of effect in here. So we have to add an effect. So go to your effect control panel, which if you can't find, just go to window and find effect from here or shift plus seven. Now I'll go into video transitions and we have a bunch of them. So we have the dissolve. The dissolve is what we just saw in Photoshop. So you can just add the cross dissolve over here by just clicking and dragging so click drag drop here if i go ahead and play it you can see it just cross this off there are so many of them you can try the um wipe i like using this a lot in my videos so if i go here it's just going to wipe over you can try the slide so basically that is it there are so many um effects you can use when it comes to adobe premiere pro so yeah that's about it let me know what you thought about this video in the comment section below anyway thank you guys for watching if you like this video please give it a thumbs up if you like to watch more of our videos hit that subscribe button and as always don't forget to share with your family and friends this is theo from final concept and i'll talk to you guys in the next one